Morning, everybody. Jen from Jekyll Bates. It is a Saturday morning, and it's spray session Saturday. Say that five times fast with me. Okay, so today I've been promising you guys stenciling and layering techniques and cutting stencils. So I don't use the cry cut. I don't use frisket. I don't use. Uh, I do use some of the hard pressed. I don't have a vacuum box. What do you do if you don't have any of that? We're going to discuss how I hand cut stencils and the tools that you're going to need to do that um, and be successful at it. Since we're not dealing with a particular pattern, I've lined up some old, these are old wiggle warts, not the pre-wraps, but just some older patterns. I shot them with a little bit of, of uh, color just so we can get some different colors, see how the patterns lay on different types of color. We're going to be dealing with our tools today. We're going to be dealing with off-ray, which is this stuff. We're also going to be dealing with your basics. Now these, uh, you can get them in a number of places. I've always trusted and used Jonas Summers over at Lure Color Studio in Australia. It takes a little bit longer to get, but he does a really fantastic job with his stencils. Some of the latest ones that he's been producing, just some phenomenal craw patterns. So if you don't want to hand cut, now also I have to mention because he just does some really, really good craw stencils and a lot of different types. Um, it's insane custom stencils and that's Russ Allen and he lives on Facebook. Um, you can find him also on the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting which um, I'm a member of and admin on as well. It's Michael Ornstein's page. Really great community page. I highly recommend it. If you're new to airbrushing, if you've been doing it for your life, if you're switching over from say the automotive industry into brushing little pieces of plastic and going fishing with them which is what I do for a living. So, I am not sponsored or endorsed by any of the people that I have just mentioned, but I am going to be trying to get you guys the best deal. So if you want to use the things that I'm using in these videos, the links are in the description of this video below. And you can, it's a quick link, you can go right there and get the stuff that I use at a very reasonable price. Um, I love dealing with Amazon. I'm an Amazon hound fiend, I guess you could say only because they vet their products, they give you a really good price, and it's efficient. You can usually get it. Now, I have a Prime membership, which I highly recommend to anybody that's going to be using Amazon on a regular basis. This is not an Amazon ad. I'm not sponsored by Amazon. Um, but I utilize them almost weekly for supplies. They sell the Createx. They sell the Wicked Lines. They sell everything that you see here, with exception to some of the baits, although there are some pretty decent baits that you can get, some blanks, online there. So when we're looking at this, um, this is some of the stuff that he's been putting out, but Russ Allen uh, over at Insane Custom Stencils, uh, you'll see Michael Ornstein use his stuff, and a lot of the guys are using that. So just a uh, word to the wise, there's a lot of choices out there. I'm going to help you try and make some of the basic ones. And then my recommendation to everybody that's into lure painting or airbrushing at all, is to listen and look at every video out there, not just mine, not just Michael's, not just Russ's. There's a lot of folks that put them out. Jonas at Lure Color Studios has them. So get a lot of ideas and then create your own unique style. And it just takes practice. I've been practicing, I still say I'm practicing. <laughs> um, I run a business, but I've been practicing now for several years. And I learn something almost every week different techniques, um, just tweak the patterns a little bit. Um, so let's get into the stenciling. Let's get into what I use, how to use it, how to cut basic stencils out of little pieces of flexible cardboard. Um, you'll need a Sharpie. You'll need X-Acto knife. And I, I like the backs of hook boxes because I can pretty much recycle. So these are Bill Lewis set lock hooks. These are my standard on the stuff that I ship out of Jekyll Bates. So just something that's a little flimsy, but that you will be able to get that stencil pattern on, which is what I use. We're going to do some craw patterns today. I'm going to show you how to layer your techniques so that you don't just throw a bunch of paint thickly down on your lure. So let's get to it. I'm doing a video right now. Do you want to be in the video, Molly? I know, we got the camera lights on my head. It's crazy, isn't it? Okay, but I'm working, so... No B-A-L-L -L right now. Okay, maybe later. You just want to be in the video. <laughs> this is Molly. Meet Molly Brown. 
Molly's a rescue. We're going to spend like three seconds talking since she's right here. Um, she's the only one in the litter that survived. And she was starved. Her mother ended up dying. All of her siblings ended up dying. She was extremely underweight. And she's one of the best dogs I've ever come across on the planet. She's a lab mix. <laughs> she's a sweet girl. Um, she's also got bloodhound in her. And she, uh, she likes to howl. You'll know she's got bloodhound in her when you hear her howl, huh, Molly? Well, folks, I was going to try and get this done as quietly as possible, but we've got heat indexes up into the 100 and teens. So we're talking like 115 degree heat index. Um, no, I don't live in the Mojave Desert. I live in the Delta of Arkansas. And not only is it hot, but it's humid, so we have to keep the workshop as temperature controlled and this also it serves as a, a ventilation system it's an air conditioner it also is a dehumidifier so it pulls that extra moisture out of the, which I desperately need in this place um, so I'm, I'm gonna have to keep that running and I apologize if it's noisy I'll I'll know as soon as we edit uh, but let's talk about this stuff right here this is the easiest stuff to probably learn how to stencil and make patterns with. This is called Offray. It's floral ribbon. Um, you wouldn't expect to find it um, on a lure, but most of us have enough artists in us that we're really creative when it comes to figuring out how to make different patterns. Um, aside from the cry cuts that have the, the pre-patterns that are online and you just cut it um, using your computer. And those are cool too but you can make some really awesome patterns with basic everyday things that you wouldn't necessarily normally look for like combs if you want to put a pattern like a like a bluegill pattern you want to lay that on your bait you can lay a comb down and just spray lightly and get those vertical lines a lot of folks use that I use that uh, don't use it all the time I, I kind of got a bunch of different bluegill patterns we may get into one today we may not um, kind of want to do some other things because uh, there's a lot of bluegill pattern videos out there but this is off ray there is a, uh, a link in the description below for this one thing that I'm going to recommend I'm going to move this one out of the way you can see I've already got one done over here um, I've already kind of molded this it's got wire on both sides which keeps it in place and it also makes it easier when you're clipping it with alligator clips. Now I'm almost to the point where these have been so sprayed um, that I need some refreshment on that and get, get, get a new lot in there. But just, and this is after, after I've already pulled some of it off. Let's we'll see what I'm doing in a second. This is glitter. A lot of this stuff, because it's floral ribbon, comes with glitter. And you may or may not want this black dust glitter. And there's several colors. This is just the black um, over here, if you look. It also comes in gold, a bunch of different colors. Um, but for us, we're using the black. But if you come back over, you can see all the glitter that it's kicked off. And I've already been working with this for about 10 minutes before I started the video. So you can see that it drops a bunch of glitter. So make sure that you are pretty dutiful in pulling that stuff off. Just as an example, um, I'll cut a quick piece off of here. I got a bunch of this stuff, so I don't mind. Just a tiny little strip. And we'll get that off and flip this over so you know that I don't have, and go. It's crazy, the amount of glitter that comes off of here. So that's a lot. It's very heavily glittered. So just make sure before you place this on a bait that you get as much of this glitter off as possible. It also helps wear this in. It'll, it'll help it form a little bit easier once you've kind of gotten some of that glue glitter off. So we're just going to use black. Uh, this is actually a pattern that I'm doing for a customer. So, Troy, this is how I do your pattern. One of them, anyways. Now, just to put these on, you can see that I've got this one done with alligator clips. 
And I'm not going to spend too much time on each of these patterns because we have a lot that I want to get through with you guys today. So you just kind of want to line this up. You can almost, when you're putting these things on, you kind of want it to be even and drape across both sides evenly. So I usually put my thumb on the bill of the bait that I'm using and then kind of line this up to where you can see that both are in the middle. And I'll hold my thumb down and I'll just kind of stretch this out because you want it tight. You definitely want these things on here tight. And just kind of hook this fabric over the back eyelet just like that. And then I'm going to pull this down with my thumb. I'm going to hold that there. And now you've got a real tight fit on the head of this. You can clip that nose eyelet or depends on how much patterning you're doing. With this, it shouldn't be too bad, but you can also clip both sides of the bill. You can see I've got this one clipped like that. Just so if you need to lay it down, you're not laying the bait directly. You can see that. You're not laying the bait directly on your surface. Kind of elevates it a little bit. So that's how we're going to do this one. And I just keep a, this is just a red solo cup. Cue up Toby Keith. Come join the party. The song's going to be stuck in my head now. And then just as you go down, the length of your bait, this one happens to be a, uh, is this the, yep, this is the, uh, Brian's Dinger version, which is phenomenal. Have to give Brian a shout out. He, um, he has some real quality blanks that don't take forever to get to the customer, usually within two to three days of when your order is completed. You hit that pay button and it's at your door in about three days an excellent track record. He's got quality products, not endorsed or signed or sponsored by him either, but I like to promote the products that work for me the best. And he is one of the greats. So over at Dinger Custom Baits. So you can see that we've stretched these clips all the way across. And this is just going to be a standard black pattern. Killer on walleye and smallmouth. For some reason, those smallies destroy a gold red pattern. So do the walleye. Now the paint structure that we've used on this is a fluorescent yellow. It's a Createx. Ta da! And a fluorescent red fade on the bottom. And it almost gives you that orange hue. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get that red and you get the yellow on top. Okay, and we have clamped this down. You can see it's a tight fit. And that's what you want. And for this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to load a little bit of black paint. Make sure my chamber is clear on this Iwata Eclipse. Now when I'm detailing, I really like Wicked. Um, it's a little bit thicker, so it doesn't just splatter. So if I'm doing overcoat, overlay, don't need that much in the chamber. And I've got my pressure around 30. But we're not going to go right directly on this bait with this stencil or with this layer. Evenly. I'm about three and a half, four inches off the top of this bait, drawing back just a little bit when I hit the top. I don't care if my hands get, really, look at my hands, they're always trashed. Just even sprays, folks. Let's get those even sprays in. And I'm also going to give up an Easter egg on this one. Because those of you that have watched videos of mine before and you guys have seen some of the stuff that I do and you ask how I do specific patterns, I don't give away all the secrets. But this one, 
this one's not really a secret secret. It's been out there for a while. I know Michael's talked about it on video. Once you have that basic coat down, I do want to cover the bottom as well. Just kind of blow the rest of that off. You don't want the paint to linger in your chamber longer than it has to, especially black. It has a tendency to get real sticky in there. I'm going to do both baits. Nice, even back and forth on your base coat, which is underneath. You also want to do the same thing. Just layer it back and forth. And I'm running out of paint. It's okay. Should have a decent enough cover on this. There's still a little bit of paint in this chamber. Not that bad. Okay. Now here's the Easter egg. I'm gonna load a little bit of white and contrast. And you're gonna be like, what? You'll see. Matter of fact, I wanna pull some of this black out of here. Just one way I back flush just to blow the chamber out. Just put my finger on the top of that. And it, it'll blow back. Believe me, it'll get all over you. That's what these towels are for. This is a pretty decent linen towel. Um, I found that linen towels have a lot less, not residue, but dust, lint, um, on them than everyday towels. I never use paper towels. There's so much dust and lint that comes off of them. It'll eventually clog your chamber up. So you want, you want to use a towel to clean these that has as little lint and dust coming off of it as possible. Dryer sheets help pull that stuff off too. You guys probably already know that. If you don't, just a quick tip, but even, even though I've already done that once, you can still see all that junk in there. So we'll go through a couple of times on that. Here comes the white. Now again, I don't use, I start with this base, but I, I mix some stuff into it. It's get, it gets reducer, it gets apple barrel, it gets the jacquard white that's over here it's that. Sometimes I'll throw a little pearlized into it so that the base, and I don't need much in here, we're going to contrast. This is how you contrast, folks. If you want to get that 3D image on your bait, lay the bait down flat. Not too heavy, just a little bit, and then just a little bit there as well. I still have I still have a good bit in the chamber. Yep. Okay. Leave that there. Angle your bait. Lay it flat. That's the key. You don't want to hit it directly on at a 90 degree angle. It's got to be 10, 20, 30 degrees. Okay, and that's what's going to give you that 3D image. Clear that out, just blow that off. Now because we're going to heat set, I'm going to do that off camera. But remember, every time, every time you change a color, you guys, you should be cleaning these chambers out you are going to reduce the amount of clogs you have so dramatically. Not even funny. You'll thank me later. Alright, I'm going to heat set and I'm going to show you what it looks like then we're going to move on to the next stencil. Alright, pull this off. I, I have a tendency to be a little OCD. I, I know, but it's just who I am. It's not going to go away. I have to, everything's got to go back where it came from for me. I can't leave stuff a mess. I'm real anal about that. So when we're peeling this, I peel the sides out. Make sure it's dry. It's the one thing. Because we've hooked this on the tail, on the tail eyelet, that's the last thing we're going to do. Pull it off backwards. 
you guys see that? That is 3D. Now I'm going to shoot a, a still photo of this to show you guys the shading on this, but there's your Easter egg. That's how you do it. And if it works with this, it's going to work with every pattern that uses this thicker layering. Not necessarily on the stencils, but when you're using stuff like this, when you're using stuff like this, it works. And that's, uh, that's the end of the Easter egg section, so. It's not just for breakfast anymore. All right, we're going to put these beauties off to the side. Going to clear coat them later. Not a part of this video. I've done a lot of clear coat sessions. Make sure you watch the other videos that are spray sessions. Okay, so this is Thule. There is a lot of different types of screening, I would say. You can use window screen that's not too heavy. You can use loofah sponges. You can use, um, you can get it from the fabric store. Okay, this is some pretty nifty stuff. You can get it right at the fabric store. Walmart has it. Um, I can leave a link in the description below for where I get it. But it comes in different sizes and if you're doing a smaller bait or you want a smaller scale like this one we're going to do a small one um, this is ideal it comes in a big i don't even know it's like 100 yards of ribbon in a spool and the cool thing i like about this is a lot of the times you'll get spool that's real small um, i like to use bigger squares because i'm going to cut it down and on this one, let's use one of the darkest ones. I'm going to pull this. It's just an old wiggle wart that I have. And we're going to contrast lighter. The male. It's the male. When the mailman comes, the dogs go crazy. Yes, indeed. So, a lot of these, you don't have to spend an excessive amount of time pulling this down. So for this one, I'm just going to make sure that I have the, the bait covered Then I'm just twisting. All I'm doing is twist. The longer I spend twisting, the tighter this wrap is going to be on the bait. Okay? And you can see that we've got some pretty decent coverage the only thing I'm going to add, I'm going to put two clips right here on the bill and that's just to lay the bill down because you can see it's, there's just a little bit of a gap there. The bill isn't quite as important as the body, but we've got that. We're going to pinch this off here underneath. And pinch it off one more time. Now, yes, this will twist, so my recommendation is find a spot where you can hold it. So I've got that twisted off, I've got it around the other alligator clip, and that's not going anywhere. You've got a nice tight seal on it, and we're just going to, this is going to be a light pearl mist on here, so we're going to mix up some paint, and I'm going to come back and show you what the pattern looks like. All right. This is what I'm using, okay? Just to give you a brief, quick description, I've got, um, there we go, you guys can see that a little bit better. I've got a Createx Pearlized White. I've got about three drops of silver. I've got Createx Opaque, the white base mix that I use to flatten it out and thicken it up a little bit. And then on top of that, I've got just a little bit of gold, the satin gold pearlized from Createx as well. Pretty much going to be using all Createx colors. Just makes it easier than explaining 10 different types of airbrush paint, which we could, but I'm just taking the bottom of a little Walmart air um, paintbrush and giving that a quick mix. And then we're going to turn the PSI way, way down. When you're doing scaling and you're working with thinner fabrics like this toolie I've got, 
you want to turn that pressure way down because you don't want to blow paint all over because it will slide up under that. That's one thing that's a common mistake is too much pressure when you're detailing. You really want to minimize that pressure. And then immediately heat set and heat set while this is on. That's key. You've got to keep this stuff on while you heat set the bait or you're going to smear. Dogs are going to bark again because the male's coming back through. Really don't need a whole lot. Blow that off. Make sure you don't have any cleaning fluid left in your chamber. And then we're turning that pressure way, way down. All right, now we're going to spray it. I'm holding this about yeah, four or five inches, my normal. Just want to be able to cover that. And I'm not going to go all the way down the sides. That would be counterproductive. I'm going to angle the bait again and just do one little strip just so you get that fade. You see uh, out of the box like Strike King or some of the other brands Lucky Craft you see a lot of times the scaling will be faded. That's how they do it. Well, more than likely machines do it. If there's anybody out there that's worked for these companies and you want to throw us some Easter eggs, feel free. Alright, so we're going to heat set that and I'm going to show you what that pattern looks like. I'm going to give you two angles on this reveal only because I don't think that my GoPro has the, uh, the megapixels to get that macro image that you'll be able to clearly see the scale pattern. Maybe. We'll see. Always from the bottom top and then just peel that off. And there is your scaling pattern. And I'm about to show you the other angle. Here's a little bit better of a view. Now we didn't want this heavy and it's not. This did exactly what we wanted it to do. Just give that presentation of fish scales. Very light. 